What's going on car family? I'm Ben Wayne and thank you for joining me in another video. Today we are here to take a look at the all new 2022 Nissan Frontier Pro X Crew Cab. That's right, an all new Nissan Frontier, finally. I don't know if you guys noticed, but the previous generation of the Frontier was around forever. It had to be around for at least 15 years or so. It was like the Grand Theft Auto 5 of mid-sized trucks. It was just always there. So Nissan finally decided to give the Frontier a much needed update. This is all new for 2022. Lots of tech, lots of comfortability, lots of changes that make this way better than the outgoing generation. Now the midsize truck market is extremely competitive. This is going against trucks like the Toyota Tacoma and the Ford Ranger and others as well. So there's not a lot of room for air when it comes to all new redesigns like this one. So today I want to check out the exterior and interior details of this Glacier White 2022 Nissan Frontier and see how this ride has been engineered for excellence. Starting the review with the front of the Frontier. This looks way better than the outgoing generation, I must say. I think we can all agree on that. The outgoing generation looked way soft. This looks muscular, chiseled, aggressive. Look at the indentations on this hood here. You have a massive blacked out grille with the blacked out Nissan badge with orange accents that pull together those tow hooks next to the skid plate there. That is part of your off-road package as well, by the way. Now, of course, you have daytime running lamps that are LED and LED projector lamps as well. Underneath the hood, you're getting a 3.8 liter V6, giving you 310 horsepower and 281 pound-feet of torque. That's connected to a nine-speed automatic transmission. Now, your fuel economy is gonna be 18 city and 24 highway. Not the best, but what do you expect for a truck, right? Now, I will mention that this has the best in-class approach angle of 32.3 degrees. So Nissan really did some efforts to make this a better vehicle than the previous generation, as they should have, because we had it for forever. But overall, I'm really impressed with the looks of the front end of this vehicle, and I wanna see what the side profile has to offer. Let's go ahead and check that out. Checking out the side profile, you can't help but notice the 17 inch beadlock style wheels wrapped in massive all-terrain tires. Behind these tires are Bilstein shocks that come equipped with this vehicle as well. Now you also have this black plastic cladding over the wheel well, provides a nice contrast to that white paintwork as well. Now you notice you have some steps here that are fixed in place. Sometimes I like them, sometimes I don't. That's something that kind of can interfere with your ride height if you were taking this vehicle off-roading but you definitely want to watch your shins during ingress and egress these things can get you here now you'll also notice an indentation on the front door so it comes down a little bit i really like that that's going to help you with your exterior visibility so i think that's a nice design trait that they incorporated in this vehicle now one thing that i will say about this new generation frontier when compared to the previous generation unlike every other vehicle out here the old generation and this current generation have the same wheelbase, so it didn't get larger. The wheelbase remains the same at 126 inches as well. So that's a really nice touch that they said that they're gonna stick with this mid-size segment instead of taking the name and turning it into something else. Now, another thing I like about this vehicle are the high shoulder lines. The high body lines really provide a nice chiseled, muscular, and rigid look to the overall side profile of the vehicle. Let's go ahead and check out the rear. The rear of the Frontier features a dampened tailgate, so I can just pull the latch, it comes down nice and slowly. It doesn't slam on you like those old school trucks from back in the day. The bed is a five foot bed that features LED lighting so you can see what's in here in low light conditions and also has a home style power outlet and then a lever on this side to help with your ingress and egress, so that's nice. And you'll notice that there's a step here hidden right underneath the bumper on the driver's side. So this goes up nice and easily. You have Frontier stamped on the rear of the vehicle. There's no mistaking what this is. And of course, your Nissan badge has been blacked out with orange accents as well. You have a Pro X badge as well, LED tail lamps. And then when it comes to the towing capacity, depending on how the Frontier has been configured, the Frontier can tow up to 6,720 pounds. Let's go ahead and check out the interior and see what's all new for 2022. 
So I'll start off the interior with this. Usually when there's a new generation of a vehicle, it takes several years of development. It takes a lot of money to introduce a new generation, which is why typically we only see new generations of vehicles between five to seven years, sometimes maybe even 10. In the case of this particular Frontier, it was more like 15. So now we're getting this new generation here. So everything is all new, but then there's one significant thing that dates this car, and that is the steering wheel. I'm kind of curious as to why Nissan went through all this trouble to redesign this vehicle inside and out and then stuck in a steering wheel that dates the vehicle. Behind the steering wheel, you do have two analog gauges with a display in the middle. I would have liked to see a thin film transistor display there, especially for a vehicle that almost hits a $45,000 price point. That's just my personal opinion. Though this is a mid-sized truck, maybe the market of folks that they're going after want to see some analog gauges there. So no points off for that. Now coming over to the center console, you do have a nice and large, fresh and crisp touchscreen system here. That is nice and easy to use, super responsive, which is industry standard by now. It does have an around view camera system. So it shows you what's going on around the car when you're in and out of parking lot spaces. That's extremely useful. Different settings as well. Now I will say the camera quality isn't the best, but it definitely gets the job done. This infotainment system also has the Apple CarPlay, Android Auto, pretty much everything that you could ever use or need in a mid-sized truck is here. Coming lower, you do have controls for your air conditioning system. I like how that wasn't integrated into the touchscreen system. That is so annoying when auto manufacturers do that. So I like how it's separate physical knobs and dials here. And then you also have separate knobs for the volume and tuning for your radio station as well. So physical controls can pair well with a touchscreen system. It doesn't all have to be on a touchscreen. Coming lower, you do have controls for your heated seats and even your heated steering wheel, which is something we definitely didn't see in the previous generation. You also have two USB ports and then a generous amount of storage here as well. You also have two cup holders and then a traditional gear selector here. Now it's not a rotary knob or electronic buttons that you press. It's just a traditional gear selector. No points off for that. This is a mid-sized truck. And I think the people going after vehicles like this want a traditional gear selector. Coming further back, you have wireless charging. Again, something we definitely didn't see in the previous generation. And again, additional storage in the center console as well. Now the seats are covered in black leather. They have a nice pattern to them as well with Pro X embroidered in the seats. They're nice and comfortable. And again, they're heated as well. Now the door panels are covered in an injection molded material, just like you see here on the dash. And I like this indentation here in the design, which gives me better outward visibility. That's a nice touch. You also have controls for all four windows, cold to the touch door handles, controls for your side view mirrors, unlock and lock buttons, and storage on the bottom of the door as well. Now I do like this sunroof here. I've used that quite a bit. Brings a lot of light into this dark cabin. So overall, the ride is smooth in here and the seats and the finishes, the overall design is really nice. Let's go ahead and check out the rear. All right, guys, I gotta be honest with you here. I'm a little bit disappointed in the space on the rear seat here. So I'm about five foot 11 and you can see I'm sitting behind myself and my legs are hitting the back of this seat. So it is cramped back here. And to add to that, the backrest of the seat, I feel like they're at 90 degrees. So this does not have the best in-class interior space on the second row. Now, with that being said, this bench seat does lift up and gives you some additional storage space back here as well. You do have one USB type C and one traditional USB port here, along with the home style power outlet as well. The door panels, again, injection molded material, a little bit of storage on the bottom. Not much to report about when it comes to the door panels back here, but overall, the interior space in the back is a little bit disappointing when it's compared to its competition. Now let's go ahead and get the 2022 Frontier out on the road and see how this vehicle handles. So we're on the road in the 2022 Frontier. First impressions, the overall ride is extremely comfortable. I mean, it still feels like a truck, but it's tolerable. This is something you could drive on the daily, which is what Nissan was aiming to do. They were aiming after that target market that wanted a truck, but didn't necessarily want a large truck or an extremely small one. This is a mid-sized truck 
or a right size truck that you can drive on a daily basis. So the ride quality is nice. The exterior sounds aren't really coming into the cabin to a point where, you know, it's unpleasant. This is a nice riding vehicle. Now I do have on the heated steering wheel and the heated seats as well. So I'm taking advantage of some of those creature comforts that we're getting in 2022. Those are definite nice to haves. I am really impressed with the touchscreen. I really like how it's been executed, it's organized, it's easy to use, but not all the vehicle's features are incorporated on the touchscreen. Again, I can't stress enough how annoying that is when car manufacturers just throw in a tablet and say, hey, we're throwing in all the features on the touchscreen. You have a volume knob, you have a knob to tune the radio, you have knobs for your air conditioning controls, physical buttons for your air conditioning controls as well. You have buttons for your heated seats and your heated steering wheel. So the touchscreen is there for purposes where the touchscreen would excel at, such as going through the various menus, um, such as your radio or your, your navigation, your weather, stuff like that. Stuff a touchscreen is supposed to be used for. Not everything, but the stuff that it excels at. So that's nice. The steering feels a little bit heavy in this vehicle. You know, I suspect that they didn't want to over boost the steering because that kind of gives you an artificial sensation, especially in vehicles that are built to be driven off road. So I'm going to go ahead and floor it again. We're looking at 310 horsepower here. So this thing does get up and go. It feels like it accelerates like a mid-sized vehicle or a mid-sized truck should. You know, I don't feel like it needs any more power than it already has. It definitely gets the job done. The nine speed automatic transmission is also fairly smooth as well. So definite points for that. Yeah, so it's a nice transition into acceleration and it doesn't sound like it's struggling either. I really like that about this vehicle. So, so far for me, the only disappointing things that I found about the Frontier are, you know, the steering wheel design. Some people might not care about that, but I think the major issue for me is the seating in the rear. Again, it's a little bit cramped back there. So if you're thinking about getting this with a family of four, you know, you might want to go to a dealership and test out that rear seat first before you make that commitment. That's all I'm saying. The power plant is more than adequate. The fuel economy, eh, you know, 24 highway, 18 city, eh, it's all right. But, you know, you're going after a truck, so you can't really complain too much there. So, like I said, the price point for this one is about 44000 45000 ish This one is the two-wheel drive model. I'm a little perplexed as to why they give you the all-terrain tires, the Bilstein shocks and everything like that and then you know make four-wheel drive an option right there's a pro 4x and then there's the pro x so this is the pro x model the non all-wheel drive model you know for something that's designed to go off-road you would think all-wheel drive would be standard so i'm a little puzzled as to why that's so but overall i think this is a huge step in the right direction for nissan the old frontier was here forever in ever and ever and it just seems like we were never getting rid of it i don't know if that's a nissan thing or what because they tend to do that sometimes with their cars for example the 370z i believe they announced that and like i want to say around 2009 or so and just now we're getting a replacement for that vehicle so that's quite a long time especially in an industry where redesigns are put out between five and seven years. And it seems like Nissan held on to the Frontier forever. So once the new Nissan uh, Frontier was announced, I was a little bit shocked that they finally came out with the replacement for it. But I must say, this new generation is better than the older one in, in every way, shape, and form. I mean, you even have the lane assist, you have the emergency braking, the pedestrian detection, all the safety features that you would want and a modern vehicle are in this frontier. So it's nice to see that they paid some attention to that. So overall, that's my impressions from the test drive of the 2022 Frontier. You guys let me know what you think.
So that was a brief overview of this 2022 Nissan Frontier. Could you guys see yourself in this mid-sized truck? Nissan actually refers to this as the right size truck because it's neither too big or too small for its intended market. Let me know what you guys think about this one in the comment section. As shown, this is going for just under $45,000. Second nature, like breathing. You guys know what I'm going to ask you to do. Please remember to like, share, and subscribe to my YouTube channel. And until next time, I'm Ben Wayne, the automotive reviewer that YouTube deserves.